Yeah, so I should introduce myself. My name is Paul Gibbon. I'm from the Ulich node of uh, ECHO. Uh, where we're actually involved in uh, every uh, every work package. So in each of these pillars, we have we have a group uh, working. So this is why Ulich is very interested in this in this project. Uh, I myself, I'm based at the uh, Supercomputing Center, so I'm I'm more kind of uh, in this uh, horizontal. Uh, activity. So um, let me just uh, return to this theme um, about how we how we work in Echo. So as Edouard already uh, explained, we have we have these four uh, thematic uh, domains, uh, and we also have this this horizontal HPC uh, basis. And rather than let now you could say, okay, we divide this up into five work packages and let everybody go and, and, and do some work and then uh, come together for, for our meetings. But um, we realize this, this won't work in terms of um, uh, interaction or improving code. So what, we, what we've done is we've insisted that uh, each of the applications in, in these uh, vertical domains um, has some... Uh, well, get, get some challenge defined <coughs> for it. Okay, so we ask the PIs in here to define some energy science challenge for which their application doesn't quite fit the bill yet. Okay, and that uh, so that they they have to come to us in order to get it uh, up to speed, and then they can uh, go ahead and solve their, their challenge. And one of these, uh, I'll give you an example straight away. This comes from the uh, meteorology. Uh, domain. Uh, this is about uh, short-term uh, or immediate-term now casting, um, and it's really uh, about doing probabilistic uh, forecasting for solar and wind power. So you can imagine this is a this is a very sensitive thing. If you get the if you get the amount of sunlight wrong on a you know above a solar farm or the wind uh, speed wrong. In a certain region where you're, you want to be generating power, this can of course affect the uh, the, the production through these energy sources uh, on, on the following day or a couple of days, and this will affect the energy market itself. So it actually there, there is actually a stock exchange for energy, and and, and the pricing of this uh, uh, market is very sensitive to uh, to weather. Okay, and so this is the the, the kind of thing that. Um, we're trying to do here. This is actually the work of uh, Hendrik Elburn, who's uh, also here today, I think. Is he? Yes. <laughs> okay. So if I say anything wrong, then Hendrik will correct me immediately. But um, so this is this is a, an application which it actually uses this uh, uh, rather uh, standard public uh, model, the the Wharf model, uh, which is uh, uh, publicly accessible. But this alone is not enough. They have to do uh, many, many runs with this, with this code, up to a thousand uh, simulations, the so-called ensemble. And it's really the, the processing of that uh, collective ensemble which is the key here. And that's something which they've optimized uh, during the course of the project. Um, okay, in the, uh, the second pillar here, this is... Um, uh, Quite a broad uh, range of activity. There are actually four uh, separate uh, lines here, so-called application lines. Um, the lead here is Massimo Cilino, who's uh, also sitting here. And again, he can correct me if I <laughs> say something wrong. So really, uh, horizontally, they've actually got a similar uh, matrix in miniature uh, to our uh, global uh, project matrix. So we have the, the kind of vertical uh, applications here, and then horizontally we have the uh, numerical tools uh, used to uh, tackle these challenges. But you see that they can actually, uh, you know, each, each model uh, can be utilized in each of these um, applications. Okay, and I'll, I think I'll come to, I have one example a little bit further along, where, which illustrates this in more detail. Um, the, the third one is, is uh, hydrology. Again, Edouard already mentioned this, and there are, there are two main um, uh, 
uh, applications here. One is on geothermal uh, power and the other on um, hydropower, management of hydropower and predicting um, how much water you're going to get um, you know, flowing into your, into your dams. And this really requires uh, extremely detailed, high resolution uh, modeling of the entire, um, you know, on, a, on a continental scale, uh, more or less here. So that's, that's the goal there. And then finally, um, <clears throat> we have a, a, a fusion energy uh, pillar uh, here. Um, we, as as we, I think many of you probably uh, know, this is, uh, there is a, a, a device being uh, commissioned in, at the moment in Cadarache, the ITER. Uh, device uh, which uh, will, once it's uh, finished, hopefully produce the order of uh, half a gigawatt um, of power with uh, with a genuine fusion gain. So this is the it's, it's, it's more than just a scientific goal here. It's really to, to kind of uh, to act as a proof of principle. But there are enormous challenges in in getting there, uh, not least in understanding how the how the uh, the fuel can be burned efficiently and how it can be extracted and that's that's really the challenge here for the, the models which um, at the moment cannot uh, deal with a device of this scale uh, on, on the present uh, supercomputing uh, infrastructure. Okay, So this really is a, a genuine uh, exascale driver here. Okay, so let me just come back uh, to our, our horizontal HPC um, activities. Uh, which uh, is kind of the, the bulk of the, the project, I would say. It's one which, um, which everybody interacts with and uh, where we have a, a range of uh, tools and uh, services and activities. Um, here, it's, it's illustrated in terms of um, perhaps where you would, uh, the order you would uh, come to us or the order of uh, difficulty <coughs> Uh, or intensity you might uh, require help with. Okay, so the very first thing is, is uh, perhaps come to us with a code which doesn't scale, and we'll look at it, uh, we'll, we'll analyze it, and then give advice on on uh, how to improve it. Okay, and then as as you come down here, you get uh, you get some more more sophisticated uh, uh, labor intensive. Um, improvements uh, in, in the, the uh, numerical algorithm itself <coughs> so uh, but the point is that we, we're really offering um, a wide spectrum of skills in order to improve or continuously improve your, your applications uh, up to exascale and I'll, I'll uh, come to that in, in a moment um, the way we introduce people to our our services is primarily through uh, um, hands-on workshops and we've held uh, three of these so far. We've got another one coming up uh, in uh, November, I believe. Um, and these are really, um, these are almost one-to-one. -one, okay, we've had, uh, so far we've had um, uh, 67 participants here. Um, about half of those have been uh, actual code developers okay so uh, <clears throat> within the workshop we might have 20 people 10 of those will be will be tutored so you really do get uh, over the three days you get uh, very very intensive uh, training and then that's that's but it doesn't stop there you see we what we do is uh, we insist that at least during the workshop uh, we create a, a kind of little co-team from the developers and and from our horizontal HPC uh, team and, and then they will go away, uh, go back and then um, analyze uh, further, uh, complete the analysis, write a report, and then try and identify where they need to uh, invest work, invest effort, in order to um, improve their application further. Okay. Now, it might turn out that uh, you know, there's no quick fix. And if that's the case, then you know, we, we have the option of, of passing work along to to our uh, experts in um, linear algebra libraries, for example. Okay. So we have a kind of um, uh, workflow uh, established uh, to help people um, at various levels. Okay, I think I'll, I'll just 
skip that one. I just want to show um, that we have a quite systematic way of um, assessing and monitoring applications. You see here the, the applications we've covered so far. There are 21 different codes from all of these um, energy domains. And then along the top here, we've got uh, um, really a, a comprehensive set of uh, performance analysis tools which we use to um, really to, to, uh, to assess, to, to quantitatively assess and, uh, and then identify um, bottlenecks in the application. Okay, so I, I just come back to uh, this chart which you've already seen. This has uh, already generated quite a lot of discussion. I, I'll, I'll just well on uh, one or two bits here. So this is, this is really a, you can sort of see if you remember the, you won't remember the names, but this is basically a, a subset of the slide I had uh, before. This is, uh, I don't know, 11, 12 applications out of the, the, the 21 we've, we've actually looked at so far. So you can expect this chart to, to get fuller over the, the coming months as, as uh, you know, these, these uh, improvements uh, start to come in. But I just want to point out that you know, we, we do talk about exascale candidates, and as well already pointed out, we've got you know, four or five uh, here uh, ready to go. Uh, we can't go any further here. So this is the, the current scalability in terms of tasks. So you can call it cores or threads, uh, whatever you want. Uh, this is a kind of generic, uh, sort of generalized uh, axis here. So this is, this is the Ukraine machine in, in, in Ulich. Uh, it can currently do up to uh, nearly two million threads. Okay, two million tasks. Um, this is the Gisela um, gyrokinetic fusion code, uh, which has already achieved this, this benchmark. And it, it cannot go any further. Okay? In Europe, we can't, we can't push it any further at the moment. So we're, we're waiting here for you know, a bigger machine in order to get it. Of course, we can, we can optimize at other levels, which we've done here. Okay, we've, we've fiddled with uh, uh, tuning and, and libraries and so on. Uh, so we can, we can optimize in, in this sense, but we can't scale it any further. Now. At the other uh, extreme of the spectrum, uh, you see that we've, 10 to the zero, that's one, okay? The, this, these codes here, these three codes came to us, uh, they, were, they were running on a laptop, okay? And, but they had problems which, where they needed more, they needed to, uh, to improve dramatically in order to get and this is uh, and that, that's what we, we managed to so we already got a factor of 10 speed up just by some fairly fairly easy uh, parallelization uh, so these are what we call low hanging fruits okay um, so you can pick those off and okay we get some nice uh, you know uh, transformational <laughs> improvement out of that but that it doesn't stop there um, an exa a good example is this this one here this this is used for uh, photovoltaic uh, simulations. Uh, it's really a kind of, um, it's, it's, um, it's a DFT, so it's a density function. So it does, it does atomistic um, uh, computation of photovoltaic, so it computes <coughs> the efficiency of the, the, the PV material. And in this case, uh, this, this is a nice case where we've, we've really, um, kind of instilled or triggered ambition in the developers. You see, they first thought, oh, we don't know if we're gonna get any improvement. We'll come on to the workshop anyway, we'll see what happens, and then, okay, they've already got this, this factor 10. But now we've, uh, the, the, uh, the PI here uh, was Eberhardt, who's, who's also in, happens to be in Munich, and one of the energy uh, institutes <coughs> there. So he has, uh, he put a, a, a new PhD student onto it, he said, okay, well, let's just try a simplified, a more, a more simpler uh, version of the model. And actually, they've, they've got this kind of reduced physics model to, to scale from here up to here. Okay. So they've gone, you know, they've kind of created a, a miniature version of the model and, and shown that they can, it can actually uh, get here. So this is an example where, okay, they, they haven't, uh, they haven't uh, been able to, to um, improve the entire model, but, but a, a, a core, a key uh, part of it. 
And so it just shows what, what the potential is there. Even for, for beginners, for HPC beginners, we can uh, you know, span this, uh, this gap here. And so this is, this is one of the things we, we set out to do. This is uh, you know, so-called skill gap bridging. And in this case, uh, I think we've, we've managed that quite nicely. OK, I'm probably uh, running out of time, so I'm, I'm going to perhaps uh, skip through some of these. This is, this is uh, again, this is the example of the, the ensemble uh, meteorology uh, computation here, where we've also got a, a nice uh, speed up and also demonstrated that it could, uh, if you can define a suitable problem, it could uh, also be an exascale candidate. <coughs> Uh, Supercapacitors. This is another example where we've already got a, a nice uh, speed up. And again, if you if you think about larger problems, you can you could also uh, go a lot a lot further. Supercapacitors, by the way, these are the things that you need in in electric vehicles to uh, to recover the, the the energy that you that your kinetic energy. Okay, it's a, it's a special type of uh, storage unit. Okay, so let me just. Um, summarize what we are uh, trying to do here. This is a sort of even more generic representation of our, of our chart. So um, the, the, the traditional way to tackle uh, exascale, you see on this scale here, we've got, we've got a, a transition here from petascale, this is where we are now, to exascale. We don't quite know what's going to, you know, what this is going to look like, but we know that it's going to be difficult. Uh, and more complex, and the traditional way to do it is to, uh, is to first of all strip down your, your application, so you just have a kind of kernel routine with a few, few hundred lines maybe, and that you can, you can work on, you can play with, like a sandbox, and you don't have to worry too much about uh, whether it's uh, <coughs> useful or not, okay? And the problem for us is that we are building a, a new community, as, as well as already said, and that uh, we'd like to keep these uh, developers on board, keep them interested, keep them keen. And so we've, we've opted for a more kind of um, incremental path so far. Uh, it could be that at this point, we're going to have to do something more dramatic um, and, and perhaps also you know, follow this, this route to some extent. But we also want to feed Feedback these improvements into the uh, into the production. Okay, we want to make it immediately uh, useful. <clears throat> okay, and then there are, um, I think um, we've, we've heard this also before in the two previous talks. The, there will be an extreme scale demonstrator prototype coming in 2020, 2021, um, and we've been asked to provide input to that. Uh, from our uh, energy uh, applications, rather our, our exascale candidates applications. And there are four of those. Um, I perhaps won't go into too much detail. I mean, this is, these are really the metrology and, and, and water uh, cases, which I've uh, sketched before. And you can do the same for uh, materials, um, storage, uh, supercapacitors, and so on. And, and the, the fusion for energy, this is a nice one, uh, because there are numbers here already, what I would like actually for the other three that I've just mentioned, uh, if uh, you know, we can have some discussion, we need uh, hard <coughs> numbers here as well uh, to provide input to this case. Okay, this is imminent, this is, going to, this is going to go into a white paper or you know, discussion paper um, for, the, for the ESD. Um, uh, cool. So, um, so in this case, you can kind of see that if you scale things up to the the, the ETA machine, uh, currently simulations are are using uh, several hundred million core hours, and so if you uh, if you want to do the same calculation with in more detail at larger scale, then you've already got you know two or three orders of magnitude on top of that. So you're talking about billions of, of core hours, really. Okay, finally, um, or penultimately, <laughs> I would just like to point out that we, uh, we do have a uh, fairly substantial service offer. You can look us up 
here under the service page. Uh, extern uh, so if you're external, you're welcome to, to uh, send us a query if you've got a, a burning problem you'd like to uh, improve an application. Uh, just just send us a uh, send us a call, and um, <clears throat> again, just I just want to recap on our perspectives. Leave this uh, uh, as a discussion. Uh, we've already heard we've, we've got a kind of conjunction of two two major paradigm shifts, and uh, we've kind of um, th this happened kind of at the time we were preparing the uh, the, the, the the proposal uh, three years ago, I think it is now, I uh, started talking about it. So it's a, it's a happy coincidence. And uh, we hope to consolidate on that now and really, really start uh, uh, pushing uh, energy stage stakeholders into, into HPC or trying to try and bring them together, discuss uh, how we can uh, work together more closely. Uh, 